Hi guys, how are we all doing? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rodian and today in this episode we are going to be talking about bad habits in bricklaying. Now whatever skill level you're at, whether you're an apprentice, you're in college or you've been doing this trade for 40 years or something, everyone picks up bad habits. Now the habits we're going to talk about today, I admit I have, I've been guilty of doing all of them. Now I've said this before on this channel, a wise man is a man who learns from other people's mistakes and a foolish man is someone who learns from his own. So hopefully this video will help you guys be the wise men and I could be the foolish man because I'm openly admitting to have, have had all of these bad habits in the past. Right, let's get straight into it and go with the first bad habit, hitting your level. Right, we're all guilty of hitting our levels. I know it and you know it. The thing is, there are two ways you tap your level. One is with the sharp side of the trowel. That is not something you should do. You, can, you damage your level, you dent it. There's also a chance you could knock the vials out of uh, plums so that they don't read true. Now these levels are built to withstand a bit of a battering, but don't whack them with that. You will only shorten the lifespan of it. The other end is use the bottom end, the heel of your trowel to tap the level over. Now, when you do this, we all do it. It's the easier way of doing it. If you have to hit it more than two or three times to get it plumb, either your brickwork is miles out or get a bit of wood and hit it. Don't whack your level super hard again. These are built to withstand damage, but you'll only reduce the lifespan of your level. Now, one of these I had when I was an apprentice, the one with blue paint on it, and this one is the one I've had since that one. Basically, I'll show you the difference. Right now, aside from being a bit dirty, the one on the left with the blue paint on it, you can see has got loads and loads of scratches and dents on it. That is because I was in the bad habit of whacking the level with the sharp side of my trowel. And on the one on the right, you can see it's just, it just needs a bit of a brush off with a bit of cement on there. That's the one that I bought secondary to the one on the left. Now the one on the left, I only the reason it's got blue spray paint on it is I only use it for setting out concrete and leveling concrete because I don't think the vials are true. I need to check them again, but I'd sooner have that be a lesson learned to you. Don't use your levels as a f***ing battering ram, that's for sure. So not hitting your level dovetails nicely into the next point. Point two, look after your tools. I made a video about this not too long ago. There's a card up here and a link in the description. I left my trowel lying outside and it got rusty. Now, I haven't done that again. What I do, when I finish laying one day, I just... I'll give it a bit of a scrape on a scaffold or on a board and let it dry overnight. And then the next morning, you just rub it off with a nice uh, iron brush. And then that should bring that up nicely. Some people like to clean it off, water it, dry it and oil it. Completely up to you. However you do it, just look after your tools because you want these to last a lifetime. You look after your tools and your tools look after you. Well, I don't really think that's true, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? Don't let it go rusty. Otherwise, you're gonna have to spend that money buying new tools. And we all know Brooklyn tools, they aren't the cheapest. Like Marshall Town Trail, you're probably looking about 35, 40 quid, a level 80 quid. There's, there's a lot of money in tools, so you look after them and you won't have to spend out so much money. Well, this brings us on to bad habit number three. You've got to get a bit down low for this one. Now, we all work on scaffold from time to time, and me, working in England, I put up with a lot of rain, especially this time of year. So, what we have to do, and what you have to remember, is always turn the boards closest to your brickwork. Because if it rains, you're gonna get it covered all over the, over the wall and you're gonna have a nasty mark. Which is exactly what I've done here, and I half did it on purpose just to make this video. So, I'm gonna have to come around and scrub all this off, just so, be thankful guys, now don't you do it. So once you finish your brickwork, this board, flip it. You want it up, <clears throat> up like that. A, it knocks all that crap off so you don't get all these snots all over the wall. And also, any rain comes down, it goes straight through, it goes straight through here, and it doesn't splash up muck on your wall. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there are slight marks on here where it has happened. Here's a much better example of it along this flank. You can tell the different colors. Sometimes you can't do it without the aid of a spanner because scaffolders, they sometimes plug them down. So you have to undo these to flip the boards over, but you must do it, especially when it's raining. You might be able to see a bit better there, especially when it's raining because your, your wall will get covered 
and it'll be a pain in the ass having to clean that all off. Like I've got a little bit of a pain in the ass cleaning this one off, but I did it for you guys. Remember, flip the boards. Right, bad habit number four, not covering your bricks. This is something that is imperative. You must cover your bricks, especially in England. It rains a lot. Let me know down in the comments. Where are you guys all from? How many of you guys are from England? I hear a few of you from America and Australia. Let me know where you guys are from. In the UK, we get a lot of rain. Now, this can fall both on the labourer and also the bricklayer himself. You need to get some plastic, cover it up. At bare minimum, get your spot board, put that on top. It's also good if you put that straight on top of there. If you can't have any of these two and get the labourer's rainproof coat, stick that on there. That'll teach him a lesson. Or failing that, if you're on your own, tut tut tut, put your own coat on it. You don't want so sodden bricks when you're laying them. They swim all over the place, you get smudges, the, the muck comes out, drips down the wall. You don't want to lay wet bricks. Now, the only exception is stocks. A lot of the time they are super dry, you have to wet them down before you use them. But you should always cover them up first. Right, that brings us on. Next tip. Next tip. Next bad habit, not a tip. These ain't tips. Don't take these as tips. They're not tips. Tips on not what on not what to do. Tips on what not to do. Oh, tongue twister there for you. Bad habit number five. I can't stress this one enough. Always use PPE when cutting bricks, cutting blocks, or using any sort of machinery like a grinder or a reciprocating saw, a chop saw, anything like that. To use PPE. Goggles, a dust mask, respirator, earmuffs, and I like to use gloves as well. In the very worst case scenario, if you don't have all of these, please just at bare minimum have goggles. These aren't the most ideal ones, but they're the only ones I've got at the moment. I've had brick in my eye before through complete negligence of wearing PPE. Yeah, I had to go to hospital. It was not a fun experience. So please, again, wise man, foolish man, be the wise men and women, wear PPE. Right, we have bad habit number six. Don't wear these on the job. You need a pair of boots. It kind of mirrors, goes on the PPE one I said a minute ago with cutting, but don't wear trainers on the building site. With this house I'm building back here, the second week of starting work here, I was wearing these exact trainers. I stood on a four inch nail, went straight into my foot. It blew up like a balloon, I had to go to hospital, have all the jabs, do all that stuff. Again, not a very pretty sight. So, if you don't have any boots, get yourself a pair of boots. If you don't like boots, get safety trainers. I've got a pair of those that look like Converse, dead comfy, perfect for the summer. But get yourself some boots, please do. You don't want to be hobbling around with one eye. One eye because of the grinder, hobbling because of the boot, you know, you get it. Why does one toe always seem to wear down a lot quicker than the other ones? Let me know in the comments. Does this happen to you guys? Well, this is bad habit number seven. This is what I like to call playing the banjo. So when you're laying to a line, and every time you butt off a brick, especially if they're already laid, every time you put a brick down, you keep hitting the, the line. It's like playing a guitar, playing a banjo. This is something that I used to do when I was an apprentice, and it did not take me long to unlearn it, to get this wind right out of me. The geezer I used to work with, every time I did it, he used to either throw a brick at me or put muck in my rigger boots. I reckon after a week, I, I ain't done it since. It's not so much a bad problem if you're working on your own, if you're doing a lot of site work or working with other people or working with people you don't know very well. Some people can be temperamental when that, when that line starts going. Don't be surprised if you get a brick thrown at you. It's happened to me before, so I'm sure it's happened to some of you guys. Let me know. Yeah, number seven. Don't play the banjo all day long. There we go, guys. There's seven bad habits in bricklaying. Let me know down in the comments which one you guys are guilty of, because tell me, you guys are guilty of a few of them. I know I am, hands up to it. Also, which ones have I been missing? All the tools and PPE that I've talked about in this episode are linked down in the description. Now, they are Amazon affiliate links, so if you do decide to purchase through them, it goes towards helping me out on this channel at no cost to you guys. I also try and strive to find the best prices for anything. All that being said, leave a like down below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.